Today I'm going to be making a pretty simple uh, rocket flight computer for like a TVC function. It's going to be very simple and hopefully easy to follow. Um, so I, I've made similar uh, versions to what I plan to make today, but usually they're pretty big and w definitely bigger than they need to be and bulkier than they need to be. So I'm going to uh, simplify it a little more and give it a smaller package. And I'm going to be using this copper clad board to make the printed circuit board. Um, I'm going to be manually draw drawing the, uh, the layout with like a sharpie. And then I'm going to be using uh, ferric chloride to etch out and dissolve all the, uh, the copper and to reveal only the traces and only the uh, copper that I need. Uh, so I'm going to do that later though. I want to first go over the schematic and what I plan to, how, to, how I plan to make this board so it's design. All right, so I'm going to uh, draw up a schematic for our flight computer for the rocket that we're going to be making, or that I'm going to be making. It's going to be pretty simple. Uh, we're going to be using this TNZ 4.0 microcontroller. It's really small and, uh, well, it's smaller than a Arduino, a, a comparable sized Arduino, and it's more powerful. So, uh, here's a similar Arduino, but this is way more powerful. So we're going to be using this. Um, we're also going to have a gyroscope and a altimeter. And the main goal of this flight computer, or the, the design, is to connect these two sensors to the microcontroller and then have a few outputs from the microcontroller, mostly having to do with the uh, servo headers that um, will be able to control our thrust vectoring mount. There are a few other things I want to add on, like a button to simplify powering up uh, this flight computer. And of course, I'm going to need a uh, converter to take in the battery voltage that we're going to be using for this computer and then bring it down to five volts, which is what the TNZ can handle. I'm probably going to be using a voltage of around uh, nine volts for a lithium polymer battery, so that, that'll bring us into a safe five volts with which uh, the microcontroller and the servos can handle. And along with that, I'm going to add in a few LEDs. Uh, I'm gonna use these surface mounted LEDs. They're really small. Um, and of course, I'm also going to need a few resistors with them to uh, bring their current down so that they can uh, handle the current that's given to them. So first off, I'm going to draw up the schematic here. So a very simple schematic. So right now we have our TNZ. Um, and I know from the pinout that this is the 5 volt in pad. So it takes in 5 volts in the top right pad right here. And it also takes in ground from the top left pad. So right here. So this will be ground. And the way that these sensors are able to communicate with this microcontroller is through a certain type of data line called SDA and SCL. So on these boards, on, on this uh, gyroscope, we have the voltage in, which is it's going to take in 3.3 .3 volts, uh, and it has a ground, and then it has SCL and SDA. So I'm gonna draw it out here. So this is going to be our 3.3 volts, our ground, our SCL, and SCL is basically a clock line. So um, 
so the microcontroller and the sensor are on the same page. Uh, SCL stands for clock, and then we have SDA, and SDA is a data line. Uh, DA stands for data, and they're going to be sending like almost like binary outputs from the sensor to the micro microcontroller uh, giving out the readings from the gyroscope. So these are the four main pins we have to worry about for this uh, for this sensor and we're also going to have a similar sensor which is going to be the altimeter so alt for altimeter. It's also going to be taking 3.3 volts of course it's also going to have a ground uh, and it's also going to have an SCL and SDA data line. So they're both going to have running on the same, uh, I guess, data language almost. And the way we're going to hook these up is that there's a specific pad designated on the Teensy that takes in the SCL, SDA, or what they're better known as I squared C data and th th those uh, two pads are going to be 19 and 18 so 19 is going to be our uh, our SCL and then 18 is going to be our SDA or yeah so they're going to be around here and then SCL and SDA so we're basically going to hook these up to both of them. And we don't have to worry about having two sensors connected to uh, the same two ports on the Teensy because they're able to have multiple sensors on those two pads. It's, what, uh, it's a benefit of using this kind of data, uh, data line. gets a little miss messy when you're drawing lines everywhere so usually you would just uh, use a flag or some sort of denotation of uh, what is going where so I would just do something like that and then on the teensy I could also denote that they're both going to the SCL line and I wouldn't have to draw in uh, lines between the two pads it'll make it a lot easier to do I'll start doing that now and we also have to worry about the 3.3 volts and the ground for both of these luckily the Teensy is able to output 3.3 volts on pad um, on the th third pad from the right top side so about here it's going to be 3.3 and that'll connect to both of these 3.3 volt in pads for the sensors. We also have the ground. Of course, the Teensy has a ground pad, so we can just wire them up that way. Uh, one thing to take note of for using I squared C data connections is that you're going to need to use what's called a pull down or pull up resistor for the data line. So for the SCL, we're going to use a resistor of 4.4K ohm resistor and this is the symbol for resistor so 4.7 K ohm resistor and that's going to go to the 3.3 volt and that basically um, it gets complicated but that makes sure that the uh, binary commands are in a specific range I believe uh, if you want to learn more about that I'll include a few videos that talks about I squared C data but that's uh, that's something you need to keep in mind when you're working with these sensors they have to have a pull-up resistor and we're going to do the same with the SDA line all right and basically our sensors are now pretty much hooked up in the schematic so we don't have to worry about those uh, next, I'm going to take care of are the the servo headers. So we're going to be needing um, 
5 volts ground and then what's called the PWM signal which is a pulse width modulating si uh, signal and most of the pads on the TNZ have that capability so we're not going to find a problem picking a pad or running out of pads here for the TNZ. Um, and if we look at the servo we're going to be using which is a typical 9 gram micro servo um, the yellow is going to be the PWM signal the red is going to be our, our uh, 5 volts and then the brown is the ground so it doesn't really matter which way uh, the signal and the ground are because you can just switch it back and forth but the power or the 5 volts needs to be in the center so I'm going to write out what's going to go where so let's put ground here and then we'll have our PWM signal there and then I'm going to choose pad uh, pad 12 on here the bottom right corner bottom left corner and then on the other server I'm going to use the bottom right corner which is pad 13 I believe yeah so 12 and 13 okay and I drew out the schematics for the other uh, servo header and the reason we need two servo headers is that for the TVC mount we need two servos one to control the X direction or and one to control the Y direction um, and that allows us to rotate the servo or actuate the servo in all directions and now with those two servos taken care of uh, we need to think about our power and how that's going to work so what we're going to be using is called a 5 volt converter it's kind of like a MOSFET at least it has a similar similar shape and it takes in our input voltage which is going to be 9 volts and the ground of course so ground 9 volts and then it's going to be outputting uh, 5 volts which will go to our TNZ and our two servos so 5 volts and that will be our 5 volt converter very simple and then also we want to be able to turn this on and off and we'll be doing that with a switch this is a tactile a button switch that uh, can be uh, locked into place so it can lock into the on position and then unlock and turn off the system uh, you'll notice that there are six pins and uh, the I guess the combination of pins determine whether it's powered on when it's uh, pushed in or when it's powered off when it's uh, extended so I know that uh, when two oh, let me draw it out when these two are uh, used as the input and output that makes a circuit work so uh, I'm, I'm going to talk more about that in the uh, CADing software that we'll use to or the EDA software rather that we'll use to finalize this design but just keep a note that this button is a little strange that it doesn't have uh, only one or only two pins and then besides the bu button uh, as I said before I wanted to include a few LEDs so I'm going to uh, use these surface mounted LEDs and they're going to be in line with a, uh, a resistor so that they don't pull too much current and uh, pretty much burn up and then they're going to be attached to a teensy pad probably pads three four and five I won't have three of them so and these are digital pins on the teensy which means they can pretty much be turned on and off so I can turn the LEDs on and then turn them off and uh, doing that with the microcontroller and then we're also going to con uh, connect the end of the LED to ground and then the same is true with the other LEDs 
I'm not going to do them because it's a little redundant, but we're going to have three LEDs. I'm thinking about uh, a red one, a yellow one, and a blue one. Uh, and yeah, that's pretty much it with the schematic. Uh, yeah. Next, we're going to be putting this into an EDA software, an electrical design assistant software, where we can finalize this design and put it into a PCB uh, design and uh, eventually create a printed circuit board out of it, which will look like this when I'm done. And this is going to be what we're going to be mounting everything to and eventually going to be using in a rocket, hopefully. All right, this is the uh, EDA program that I plan to use for this. It's free and it's uh, in your browser, so you don't have to worry about downloading anything. I already have an account. So I'm just going to log in. And uh, this is where we're going to be making the PCB for uh, the schematic we made for the flight controller. So I'm going to open up a new project. Okay, I'm just going to call it Flight Controller Rockets. Alright, first thing we need to do is kind of repeat the process that we just did with the sch uh, schematic and do it in the program so that the program knows uh, what pin goes to what uh, other pin, pretty much. So we do this by uh, first inputting the, the the devices or the electronic, like the microcontroller and the sensors that we're going to be using. Um, so we go over to the library and we enter in TNZ4. And if we go over to user contributed, that's where you're going to find most of the uh, most of the things you're looking for. Uh, we can find TNZ4.0. TNZ we'll use that. And place it down. All right, perfect. In fact, this might not work because uh, if you look over here, it doesn't have a uh, a pin out for. Like if we uh, go to, uh, let's see. Yeah, like this, we can see the layout of the board and a more physical pin-wise uh, representation of the board. So I'm going to find a, try to uh, find one with that in mind. All right, here's one. So I'm going to Here's one. So we have our microcontroller. And don't worry about this part of the board. This is the underside of the board. Uh, we're not going to be using that. This is effectively the board we're using. So we have our ground, our voltage in, uh, another ground pad, and then our 3.3 volts, which is reflected in the pinout. So we're also going to be going to library again. Uh, the, uh, the gyroscope I'm going to be using is called the hmm, GY521. Uh, hmm. I think it's also called a... Uh, oh, here we go. Alright, perfect. Here it is. And then one more. Uh, well, a few more, actually. We have our BMP-180, that's the altimeter we're using. We want one with a footprint, like, uh, mm, that's the uh, standalone sensor we want the breakout board for it. Uh, yeah, that seems good. Alright, so... There we are. We have our two sensors and our 
uh, microcontroller, but we also need a few header pins, a converter, and a, a few LEDs. So header pin three by one. All right, and perfect. Yeah, two of these. What else? What else? Um, I'm going to read out the uh, technical name of our converter. It's an L seven eight o five CV. CV doesn't really matter, but uh, we'll be using this one, and then we have a few stout. Oh, that's not right. Uh, we have a few standard parts that we need to put in, so we can just go to this library. Uh, we have our pretty standard resistors. We're going to need one, two, three, three for the LEDs, and then two for the pull downs. And then we're also going to be ne needing a uh, few LEDs. I'm going to be using, I don't know if they have them actually. No, I'm going to have to look in the library again. Uh, I believe it's a 1202 LED, I think. Maybe it's a 1206, actually. Uh, yeah. And that's just denoting the type. Like, it's a surface-mounted LED with a certain size. And we're going to have three of these. doesn't matter what color the program thinks it is. It doesn't really matter. We just have three of them. And, um... Besides the button, we need the button. And the button, I think, is pretty... It's not the easiest thing to find, but let me see. In fact, it might be best if we, uh... If we just use the header pins from the LED. Or from the, uh, servo, actually. Control-C, and then Control-V. And we'll hook it up in the, uh in the PCB maker in such a way that they're the right distance apart, pretty much. So now I'm just going to go over like how I'm going to organize it and uh, I'll get back to you once I have it set up. Okay, so this is pretty much it, uh, minus button, and you might notice that I use these little flags uh, instead of connecting everything up, and that just helps keep everything neat, like this 5 volt flag pretty much connects directly to this 5 volt pad instead of, uh, or flag, instead of having to wire everything around and make it really messy. Uh, you should do this more often than I did here, uh, because it makes it really easy to determine what's going where, and that helps with the uh, the the appearance of your schematic. So right now I'm going to just wire up that up, and uh, that's pretty much it for the schematic. So we're going to save Control S. And then we want to go to design, convert to PCB. Uh, you don't have to worry about that. 
and then we'll go onto this black screen uh, and then we get this this uh, little window opening up you can basically choose the diameter or the width and the height of the board I'm going to leave it where it is right now because I don't know exactly what my width and height are going to be so I'm just going to keep it that way all right so this is our teensy I'm going to move it over here um, because that's where the, S the, the micro SD card is going to be also remember how we wanted to uh, to lay it over so I'm going to go over here R R to rotate and I'm going to move it right up right next to it just like that and you see that we have our, our SDA and SCL pad switched. That's pretty annoying. Um, yeah, we're going to have to find some way to wire them around so that they don't intersect like that. All right. So, and how we uh, figure out, or how we draw the traces, which is like the copper that is placed on the board. We go over here track or trace really it should be called trace and we just hit the center of the pad and then pull it in directions if we want to add like a uh, another joint we just right uh, left click and then we just bring it around all right and if we want to exit it we left uh, right click all right here's what I'm going to um, for me, the track widths or the trace widths are a little too thin, so I'm going to go to. Uh, all right, I'm going to have a thicker trace width because I'm going to be doing this manually. It's going to be a little tough, but uh, I'm going to do my best. When you're doing this, your uh, PCBs are going to be manufactured, so you don't have to worry about that exactly. But I do here, so. All right, so you see it got a lot thicker. Um, and that's gonna be troublesome for trying to get this one over here. So I'm gonna worry about that in a second. I'm gonna take out this ground pad since it's a lot easier.
Okay, this is, I think this is going to be uh, pretty much the final layout of the board. Um, it's a little messy and um, it's a little difficult, especially with the big traces and the one-sided board. Typically, we would use a two-sided board to avoid these little gaps that we have to um, we have to cross over with wire, physical wire, not just like the traces. Um, so I have to deal with that, but I, I think it's simple enough where I can draw it out on the board and uh, get it done. You can see how I layered the gyroscope on top of the the um, uh, TMZ. I also put the LEDs underneath the TMZ, and it's going to be done this way. I'll show you when I do it, but since it's uh, the LEDs are surface mount components, it means that they uh, need to be attached to the copper, and the copper is going to be on the underside of the board. So the LEDs are going to be on the underside of the board pretty much, and that'll help save space. And I think this is good. I'll, I'm going to manually hook up the, uh, the power button. But other than that, ooh, I forgot one thing. Ground. See, like you get into this scenario where you're kind of locked out and you have to either find a really long pathway like, like that or you just have to bite the bullet pretty much and just manually wire this pad up to to this pad. All right, a few more to do. I'll get back when it's really done. Alright, I think this is pretty good, so I'm going to uh, print this up, and I'll show you the physical layout. Alright, so I'm back with the printout of the board. It's smaller than the ones I've done before, but not by much. I would have liked to uh, would have liked to make it a little smaller, but it's kind of tough with these trace lines. Since I have to draw them, I have to make them a lot wider than I normally would. But this will this will work. Um, so so the next step that I'm going to be doing, and remember, when you're designing your flight controller for uh, the TVC project, you're not going to be having to make the board, or at least not make the board like I'm making it. Uh, I'm normally I would use what's called a photo resist. Uh, uh, PCB board, which is basically, or PCB, uh, which is basically when there's a photo resist layer on top of the copper, and that layer kind of works like film in a camera, where when you expose it to light, it develops, and uh, where you expose it to light, it kind of gets these, it, I, I guess it would, uh, would say it hardened, or some sort of chemical reaction takes place where it is, uh, it doesn't get uh, wiped away pretty much, and it forms a layer on the copper that blocks the, the etchant, what we're using to dissolve the copper from, um, from dissolving the traces. And this is a failed board that I made, uh, but you can see how the traces kind of poke through the blue film, and that the blue uh, film is the photo resist, and then you have the copper layer underneath that, and then underneath the copper you have this fiberglass material which uh, holds it together. And yeah, so this is what I would normally use. It's a lot easier because it's um, it's you can print out uh, the actual board design and just kind of project it onto the copper, or the photo resist board, and then. Uh, you dip it in some hydro. I think no, it's um. I, th I think it's hydrochloric. No, no, not hydrochloric. Uh, a chemical found in uh, Drano, 
that I used and uh, that'll wipe away the non-exposed or the exposed part of the boards and leave the, the uh, non-exposed parts and uh, then you take that and you dip it into the etchant which is their or, uh, ferric chloride and that'll dissolve away and leave us with only the traces we want and we'll, we'll uh, get rid of all the copper and just have the fiberglass and the traces. But we're going to be doing this manually pretty much by drawing out all the traces with the sharpie on our board and then dipping that into the etchant which will, the sharpie will block it out. Uh, so right now I'm going to cut this out and kind of get it set on the board and then I'm going to cut the board using a, uh, a saw. Alright, so we're left with the board on its own. Uh, I also left space for mounting holes so that I uh, I can, of course, attach the board to some sort of mount system inside of the rocket. Otherwise, it's uh, it would just be kind of floating around. Um, so I'm going to cut based on these dimensions trying to find a uh, clean edge. I think this will do.
Okay, so this is the PCB. I'm going to drop it into our etchant and uh, start um, dissolving away the uh, copper on the board and eventually we'll be left with only the traces. Okay, so um, I have the PCB made for the flight computer. Uh, unfortunately, I can't really put it together today because I uh, I broke the drill bit I used to uh, make the holes for all of the through hole components like this, these pins. So I can't really put it together, but I made the board and I, I encountered a lot of problems making this. Typically, I'd use that uh, photo resist board but I didn't have that. Uh, I only had like the copper clad board. Uh, so I had to figure out a way to transfer the pattern of the PCB onto the board. And I did that by, uh, by strapping it a Sharpie onto my 3D printer and kind of using it to map out the board layout. Uh, so that took me a while and I also went through a lot of different ways to do it that didn't quite work. Like I tried uh, printing the, the layout onto a piece of magazine paper like because it's glossy and then I would try to press the paper onto the copper and transfer the ink. That didn't really work. Uh, but this, this worked well after I kind of tuned my printer to uh, work well with it. So this is this is one of the ones I did. This was a little too small. I think it got scaled down. But once I scaled it up, I was able to print it, and it came out really nice. And I uh, did the the etchant part of the the etchant step where I dipped it in the the, the ferric chloride, and that got rid of most of the copper. But yeah, so this turned out pretty well, better than I thought it would. And once I get new drill bits, I'll uh, finish drilling out the holes and solder everything together.